Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video. Welcome back to the Over the Wire War Games challenges. Uh, in this video and in future videos, of course, I'm going to be taking a look at Over the Wire Natus. And uh, as I said, I'm going chronologically. So we've completed Bandit. We're now going to Natus. And um, apart from Bandit and Krypton, I believe, I haven't done any of these other war games. So this is going to be very interesting. Um, so let's click on Natus and let's see what we're dealing with. So you can see that Natus uh, tells us right away, Natus teaches the basics of server-side web security. All right, so this is going to be focusing on web application security, uh, stuff like that. Um, so uh, the proxy that I've decided to use for this video series is going to be OASP Zap. Now, the reason I'm using OASP Zap is because, uh, number one, it's a free and open source software. And I just believe that uh, you should be using that if you do have the option and uh, it's just as good as burp suite but of course burp suite is looked as the de the as the de facto option uh, but i'm going to be showing you what um, i'm going to be doing with uh, with oasp zap so that you can learn as as i'm going through it as well and i'll be trying to explain all the steps i'm taking uh, one last thing i'm going to be sorting out these videos based on the uh, on, on the vulnerability that each level is going to be focusing on uh, and uh, yeah, so let's get started. So it tells us that each level of Natus consists of its own website located at, and it gives us the URL here. Uh, so HTTP Natus X dot Natus dot Labs dot Over the Wire dot Org, where X is the level number. There is no SSH login uh, to access the level, so we're primarily de dealing with web applications. So enter the username for that level, which is uh, going to be Natus zero for level zero, and its password. Each level has access to the password of the next level. Your job is to somehow obtain the next password and level up. All passwords are also stored in Etsy Natus Web Pass. So it looks like we'll be dealing with a server or some command injection at some point because it actually gives us the directories as to where the passwords for the next levels are stored. So for example, the password for Natus 5 is stored uh, in the files Etsy Natus Web Pass Natus 5 and the only readable by Natus 4 and Natus 5. All right, so uh, we start here. It gives us a username and password and the URL. So let's open that up immediately. So I'm just going to copy this and open link in the new tab and we'll enter the credential. So Nata zero, Nata zero. And uh, let's get this show on the road. So I'm not going to save the password. Uh, so it looks like we don't have an SSL certificate. And uh, yeah, all right. So this looks like a fairly basic site. We have the we have a nav bar at the top without any menu items. We also have this little container telling us that you can find the password for the next level on this page. So let's just check the source, uh, view the source of the page. So the stuff in the head has nothing to do with the page. Uh, it looks like we get a uh, uh, this looks like a JavaScript variable that gives us the level that we're on and the password for that level, which is quite helpful. We'll also be playing with that and. Uh, we also have a comment that gives us the posit for Natus one. So yeah, that that was extremely basic. This is one of the things. Uh, these are one of the vulnerabilities you hardly find nowadays with uh, production web applications because uh, no one actually leaves comments in the code anymore. Uh, we also have a submit token uh, link here, which takes us to a uh, CTF dashboard. All right, so it looks like uh, you typically submit your flags here or the passwords here. So let's move on to Natus one. And um, just hit Natus1 and we'll paste in the password here. All right, so it tells us you can find the password for the next level on this page, but right clicking has been blocked. Um, so let's see if we can right click. So it tells us right clicking has been blocked. Uh, uh, no, it looks like we can actually right click at the bottom here. So it looks like there's a div or a container that we cannot actually right click on, but we can do it right over here. And we get the password for Natus uh, level two. Um, if we explore the page, we can't see anything anything interesting at all. So let's just head on over to the next level. Uh, so far, this is uh, quite simple, but I guess it starts off that way. I'm not really sure. With Bandit, it's sort of tapered off at the end. It got quite challenging, but um, anyway, so Natus 2. Uh, it tells us that there's nothing on this page. Um, let's see if we can view the source. So it tells us, again, it gives us the standard uh, header here. Then it tells us that the stuff in the head has nothing to do with the level. Quite interesting. Uh, I don't think I'll take them that seriously because it looks like they have some interesting information here. Um, so we get the, it tells us there's nothing on this page and it gives us an IMG here on image, uh, which I can't actually see here. That's interesting. Um, 
and the image is a pixel.png so if we click on it it just displays a pixel a single pixel which is why we can't actually see it here on the web page uh, it also looks like this is under a directory called file so let's see if we can actually access this directory or perform some directory traversal so png yeah that's the png file let's see if we can access this directory and indeed we can so uh, we get a users.txt file, but the other thing we can see is we're running Apache 2.4.10 on a Debian server. So yeah, that uh, that's pretty standard information. If we go to the parent directory, that takes us back to the home page. So I'll go back. If we go to the users.txt file, uh, this gives us uh, users for for some other. It gives us passwords for some other users and also the password for Natus Level Three. So I'll keep this web page open in case we need it. And let me just back out a little bit here and we'll open up Natus level three and um, level three and uh, we'll just enter the password. All right, so this tells us there's nothing on this page. So again, let's view the source. Let's also check, uh, let's also check whether we can, uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, so this tells us the same thing uh, and for the content it told, we have a comment here telling us that no more information leaks not even Google will find it so uh, that looks like a hint to actually uh, take a look at the robots.txt file which uh, will actually show us what files and directories are disallowed and immediately we get a directory called secret so let's try and access this directory um, let's see what files or directories we have in here so it looks like we have a users.txt file so let's click on that and that gives us the password for natus4 so yeah this is this is fairly simple um, um, so let's go to natus4 and um, we'll click on enter and uh, yeah we want to just get rid of this secret directory because we are dealing with a new level now Oops, sorry about that, guys. Uh, looks like I opened this up in a uh, in a different tab here. Uh, can I actually just drag this back on top? Yeah, there we are. So we'll drag this back, uh, and this tells us uh, access disallowed. You are visiting from quotation marks. Looks like it can actually be a very a variable there. While authorized users should only come from HTTP natus five dot natus labs dot over the wire dot org. If we refresh the page. We see that it yeah it tells us that you're visiting from natus 4labsoverthewireorg while authorized users should only come from natus 5. Uh, so I think yeah this we did I think I know what we're supposed to do here. So it looks like this is just a, a simple uh, case of just changing the referrer from natus uh, with the request the get request from natus 4 to natus 5 and hopefully that gives us a different response. Let's just check the source here because I don't want to miss anything. Um, so it looks like it doesn't give us anything else apart from the standard stuff in the header and the JavaScript variable here. Um, so I think it's time we actually use our proxy. Uh, we're going to be using Zap. Uh, and for some reason, I actually forgot to install the Foxy proxy plugin. So Foxy proxy, um, we're on Mozilla Firefox here. So we'll just get the standard edition. And I'll just wait for this to load up. I'll add this to Firefox. I should have actually done this before recording the video, but in any case, yeah, there we are. So we'll just go into options and I'll add a new proxy here. We'll call it wasp zap and um, I'll just give it a nice blue color that represents its actual logo. And well, this is going to be localhost. So 127.0.0.1 and the port is going to be port 80, 80 and I'm going to hit save. And yeah, so we have that active. Um, by the way, I think I'd installed a custom certificate here. Let me just see if, if I have it installed because uh, I'll actually show you how to do this. So uh, if you want, you, you want to install the CA certificate or the certificate authority for OASP ZAP, which I believe I already did because I've been using it quite a bit. So I'm just going to delete that and uh, just hit OK. So uh, I'll start up uh, OASP Zap here, so open new window and I believe it's called Zap Proxy. I'll also make a video showing you how to install it on the various Linux distributions if you guys want to see that. So I'll just hit enter. That's going to start up the Zap Proxy for us here. I'm just going to hit start. Um, let me just close this up. So 
uh, if you want to actually uh, generate a certificate or a certificate authority, you want to go into tools and uh, options. You're looking for uh, not the client certificate. Uh, we're looking for dynamic SSL certificates and you can generate or you can import one and then you all you need to do is click on uh, save and you can save it to a particular directory and then you, all you need to do is import it with firefox uh, so what we'll do now is uh, let's actually see whether we can intercept this right now so i'm just going to click on osp zap here and uh, i do not uh i don't want to i do not want to set a break on any requests i just want to see how the data or how the requests are being sent so advanced uh, accept the risk and continue uh for some reason it keeps on telling us uh, view certificate uh, all right so yeah i think i'm oh yeah I, I forgot to reinstall it sorry about that so i'll just import and we'll import the osp zap certificate so i'll trust the certificate and just hit okay and uh, let's try that one more time now so uh, i'll just disable the proxy one more time just turn off and uh, we will uh, sort of get rid of this here and I'll just hit HTTP and we'll reload this with OASP Zap. So I'm just going to reload and it asks us for the password, uh, which I believe uh, Natus4, did I even save the password? Natus4, let's see if I have it on my clipboard. Thank God I have it. So, all right, so I sent the request. So let's see how that was actually sent. So we have a 200 code uh, response code. So let's click on that. Uh, so OASP Zap is very, very simple to use. So you can see right over here, we have the um, the actual uh, request, the get request. Uh, we can see that we have the referrer, which we want to change. We also have a cookie and uh, an authorization. The key thing or the, the interesting thing is here, if we take a look at the unauthorized one, uh, we don't have the we don't have the authorization flag here or the parameter. And I don't see any username or password being parsed. So it looks like this base64 code uh, is holding some data. So let's actually see what data it's holding. So if we go, we, let's just copy that. And uh, we want to decode this. So I'm just going to click on decode and I'll paste that in here. And yes, so you can see it's base64. And once we decode it, we can see we have the password uh, and it's natus4. So the user and the password, so natus4 and the password for natus4. So that's interesting. That will help us uh, navigate this a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is uh, we've already uh, authenticated now. That's good. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to, uh, I'm just going to set, uh, I'm just going to set a break on all the requests because we want to intercept it. So I'm just going to reload this and uh, we're going to go back into the zap proxy here. And um, uh, we want to take a look at the latest one here. So if I just click submit to the next breakpoint here, um, let's see if that has actually reloaded. All right, so there we go, that, that reloaded. So I'm just going to set this one more time and I'm going to reload that again. And uh, we want to take a look at this one right over here. Uh, if we change the referrer to Natus5, uh, sorry, we want to send this to the request editor. So we want to change the referrer to Natus5 and we just hit send. Uh, yeah, we get the password for Natus5, which was, yeah, that, that, that was pretty quick. So uh, it looks like, uh, so if we just, uh, let's just close this up here and um, I'm gonna go back into Zap. Uh, by the way, did I get the response here? Um, so again, we simply, if we change that and uh, let's just unset that. So that should, uh, let's make sure we also forward the next packet and uh, let's refresh that one more time because I didn't actually copy the password here. But any case, uh, I'm just going to break. I'm just going to set that there and uh, we will actually click on this here and uh, we want to send this to the request editor. I'm going to change that to Natus5 and hit send. And we get the password for Natus5. So I'm just going to copy that and uh, we'll close this up. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just I'll just unset and I will make sure that I have uh, I've actually submitted and continue to the next breakpoint. So this uh, you can see it's quite similar to Burp Suite. Um, so what I'll do now is I'll just disable the uh, Foxy proxy uh, right over here and uh, we'll stop proxying through a Zap and I'll just reload this to Natus5. 
and um, so I'll say Natus 5 and we will hit OK and hit enter and uh, you can see it tells us access disallowed you're not logged in all right so i think we are now at latest level five so this looks like it's dealing with an authentication vulnerability so uh, that's going to be it for this video i want to sort these videos out based on the vulnerabilities that they're covering and i feel we've gone long enough in this video i want to keep them nice and short so that we can cover things more effectively so that's going to be it for this video and i'll be seeing you in the next video